Hello everyone. So welcome back. So in the last session, so we are discussing module 5 that is applied mechanical measurement. So in the last session we have discussed the temperature measurements. So that is we have discussed various temperature measuring instruments like uh, RTD, resistant temperature detector, thermistor, thermocouple, loss of thermocouple, pyrometers and optical pyrometers. Now in this session we will discuss strain measurement. So before discussing the strain measurement first let us discuss so what do you mean by strain. So strain is defined as change in dimension of an object to the original dimension. So it is called as strain. With respect to length strain is defined as change in length to the original length it is called as strain. Therefore strain it is given by change in length to the original length it is called as strain. Now what do you mean by strain gauge? So strain gauge is a resistor which is used to measure the strain of an object. Strain gauge so which converts the force, torque, pressure, weight etc. into electrical resistance and which can be easily measured by using Wheatstone bridge. So strain gauge is a resistor which is used to measure the strain of an object. So strain nothing but change in length to the original length is called as strain. Now let us discuss the various types of strain gauges. So as we are saying in this diagram, okay, here we have mainly two types, mechanical strain gauge and electrical strain gauge. So in the electrical strain gauge we have two, three types. So resistance type, inductance types and capacitance types. Now let us discuss one by one. The first one mechanical strain gauge. So the figure shows mechanical strain gauge. Here it consists of a rigid frame and two contact conical pointers. The one conical pointer is connected to the frame and another conical pointer is connected to pivot through a, so through a frame. Now the two conical pointers which are placed on the test specimen whose strain has to be measured. Next. Okay, here, in, so here we have a dial indicator which is used to measure the deformation. When the test specimen is subjected to tensile load, so then okay, here we have a mechanical strain. Now this deformation is magnified and measured by using dial indicator. Now the strain is measured by, so dividing the measured deformation over the gauge length. So this is about the mechanical strain gauge. Okay, here we have some limitations with respect to mechanical strain gauge. So mechanical strain gauge, okay, here we have a friction and mechanical strain gauge, okay, the speed response of mechanical strain gauge is very low. So this is about the mechanical strain gauges. So mechanical strain gauge is commonly used in structural applications in civil engineering. So next let us discuss the electrical strain gauge. So electrical strain gauges, okay, here we have three types, resistance types, inductance types and capacitance types. In the resistance type, so in the syllabus we have resistance type and in the resistance type we have three types. So the first one, a bond bonded strain gauge, bonded strain gauge and semiconductor strain gauge. Now let us discuss one by one. So the electrical resistance strain gauge, it consists of a wire a electrical resistance wire so which is arranged in so zigzag manner the electrical resistance is bonded or pasted to the test specimen whose strain has to be measured by using additive material now okay here so the resistance of wire which is just given by r which is equal to rho l divided by a the resistance of wire depends on resistivity, so resistivity of material, length of conductor and area of conductor. So now let us discuss working of electrical strain gauge. So electrical strain gauge, okay, here it consists of, so a wire which is arranged in zigzag manner. The electrical strain gauge which is adhered, so which is bonded or pasted to a test specimen by using suitable adhesive material. Now, when the test specimen is subjected to external load, the test specimen undergoes deformation. Since the strain gauge is connected to test specimen, therefore the strain gauge also undergoes deformation. Now, the resistance of material is given by, 
So rho L divided by A, where rho is the resistivity, L is the length of the conductor, A is the area of conductor. Now, so due to deformation, due to deformation, the length changes and as well as area changes. When the tensile load is applied, so length increases and area decreases. When the compressor load is applied, so length decreases and area increases. So therefore, due to deformation, okay, here, due to deformation, the resistance also changes. This change in resistance, it can be measured by using Wheatstone bridge and it can be taken as measurement of strain. So this is the working of, so working principle of electrical strain gauge. So when the test specimen is subjected to external load, the test specimen undergo deformation. When the test specimen undergo deformation, the strain gauge also undergoes deformation. So due to deformation, the length changes and area changes. When the length area changes, the resistance also changes. This change in resistance is measured by using Wheatstone bridge. And the change in resistance, it can be taken as measurement of strain. So as we are saying in this diagram, okay, here in the electrical strain gauges, we have three types. Unbonded type, bonded type and semiconductor type. Now let us discuss one by one. First one, unbonded type, semiconductor, un un unbonded type strain gauge. Now figure shows unbonded type strain gauge. The unbonded type strain gauges do not have any backing material. So it consists of so fixed frame and movable flat form. The wires which are connected to fixed frame and movable flat form through insulated pin. Now when the load is acting on movable frame, next the two wires which are in tension and two wires which are in compression. So therefore, due to deformation, so the resistance of wire changes. When they, so the change in resistance, so it can be measured by using Wheatstone bridge and it can be taken as the measurement of strain. So this is the working of unbonded type strain gauges. So these strain gauges do not have any backing material or supporting material. So okay, here we have a fixed frame and mobile flat form. So the wires which are connected to fixed flat, fixed frame and mobile frame through insulated pin. So when the force is acting on mobile flat form, the two wires which are in tension and two wires which are in compression. So therefore, okay, here we have deformation. So due to deformation, the length changes and area changes. Therefore, the resistance also changes. This change in resistance is measured by using Wheatstone bridge. So next, so bonded type strain gauges. In the bonded type strain gauges, we have two types. So wire type and foil type. The figure shows wire type strain gauge. Wire type bonded strain gauge. Okay, here, so we have a thin wire, so which is arranged in zigzag manner, as we are seeing in the diagram. Next, the, so the wire which is kept between two backing material. The backing material may be thin paper or plastic. Next, the backing material is cemented to each other. The backing material which supports the strain gauge and as well as it protects the strain gauge. Now, the assembled strain gauge is pasted or bonded to the structure or test specimen whose strain has to be measured. Now, when the external load is applied to the test specimen, the test specimen undergoes deformation. So, due to deformation, the strain gauge also undergoes deformation. So, when there is a deformation, so we have change in length. When there is a change in length, then resistance also changes. So, this change in resistance is measured by using Wheatstone bridge. So, this is about the wire type strain gauge. Okay, here we have backing material. The backing material, it may be thin paper or plastic. Next, the figure shows foil type strain gauge. Okay, here we have a metal foil which is arranged in zigzag manner. So the metal foil which is supported so by using the backing material. So the backing material may be thin paper or plastic. So the next one, the assembled strain gauge which is bonded or pasted to the structure whose strain has to be measured. So next figure shows semiconductor strain gauge. So the semiconductor strain gauge consists of rectangular filament which is made from semiconductor material. So the semiconductor strain gauge is supported by using stainless steel backing material or plastic backing material. Now the leads are provided for electrically connecting the strain gauge to the Wheatstone bridge. So this is all about electrical strain gauges. So strain gauges classified as mechanical strain gauge and electrical strain gauges. So in case of electrical strain gauges, we have resistance type, inductance type and capacitance types. So in the resistance types, we have so three types, unbonded strain gauge, so bonded strain gauge and semiconductor strain gauge.
So next we'll discuss the methods of measurement of strain. Okay, here we have two methods, null method and deflection method. So figure shows which one best arrangement for measurement of strain. Okay, here we have a cantilever beam and a strain gauge is attached to the cantilever beam by using adhesive material. Now this strain gauge forms one of the arm of the Wheatstone bridge. And in the remaining arm we have the resistors R3, R4 and R2. But here out of four resistors, R3 is the variable resistor. Next, the Wheatstone bridge is connected to the supply voltage VI. Next, the voltmeter and ammeter is provided in the Wheatstone bridge. So, to measure the unbalance in the Wheatstone bridge circuit. So, now the strain gauge which is connected or attached to the test specimen whose strain has to be measured. Now, when assume that when there is no force acting on the cantilever beam, so then the bridge is balanced. In the balance condition, the ratio of resistance of adjacent resistor is equal to the ratio of resistance of remaining two arm. That is the ratio of resistance of RG1 by R2 means adjacent resistance R2 which is equal to the ratio of R3 by R4. So this is the condition for so balancing of Wheatstone bridge. Now when there is a load acting on cantilever beam, so the beam undergoes deformation. Since the strain gauge is attached to the deform, so cantilever beam, the strain gauge also undergoes deformation. When there is a deformation, so then, so we have observed the, so, so when there is a deformation, so then the resistance also changes. When there is a change in resistance, the bridge goes to unbalanced condition. Now, so to bring the bridge Again, to the balance condition, the variable resistor R3, it must be adjusted. Now, the value of R3 required for balancing of Wheatstone bridge, so gives the direct measurement of strain. So, when there is a load acting on test specimen, okay, here, so we have a deformation. When there is a deformation, strain gets also undergo deformation. Due to deformation, there is a change in resistance. When there is a change in resistance, the bridge goes to unbalanced condition. Now to bring the bridge again to the balanced condition, the resistor R3, it must be adjusted. Now the value of R3 required, so for making the bridge to balancing condition, so which directly measures the strain. Next we will discuss the deflection method. So here also we have a cantilever beam and we have a strain gauge RG1. This strain gauge RG1, it forms the one of the arm of the Wheatstone bridge. And the remaining arm, in the, in the remaining arm, we have R2, R3 and R4. Okay, here R2, R3, R4 are fixed resistors. Now the Wheatstone bridge is connected to supply voltage VI and voltmeter or ammeter is provided in the Wheatstone bridge to note down the unbalanced condition. Now, when there is no load acting on the cantilever beam, then the bridge is said to be in balanced condition. So the condition for balancing is given by RG1 by R2, R3 by R4. The ratio of resistance of any two adjacent resistor which is equal to the so resistance of remaining two RM. Now, so when there is a load acting on cantilever beam, the beam undergo deformation. So due to deformation, strain gauge also undergo deformation. When there is a deformation, there is a change in resistance. When there is a change in resistance, the bridge goes to unbalanced condition and hence the pointer in the voltmeter which deflects and hence some amount of output voltage developed. This output voltage varies so according to strain. Therefore, this output voltage is taken as so measurement of strain when it is calibrated. So this is about deflection method since here the pointer deflects so over the scale. So, and hence here we have some amount of output voltage V0. This output voltage V0 depends on the deformation. So this output voltage, the measurement of output voltage which corresponds to the measurement of strain. So these two are so methods of measurement of strain. So next I will discuss concept of gauge factor. So gauge factor is defined as the ratio of change in resistance to the change in length. 
so it is called as gauge factor now let us derive the expression for gauge factor so we know the resistance of a conductor rho l divided by a where rho is the resistivity of material where l is the length of the conductor and a is the area of conductor now take log on the both side therefore log r log rho log l minus log a now differentiate this equation so therefore dr divided by r d rho divided by rho dl divided by l da divided by a so let it be equation number 1 so we know that so area of conductor a which is equal to pi d square now differentiate the area that is da divided by a which implies that d so a nothing but pi d square divided by a nothing but pi d square so differentiate the area which implies that so 2 pi d into d d divided by pi d square so okay here so pi pi get cancel d d get cancel therefore 2 d divided by d therefore da by a da by a which is equal to 2 d divided by d let it be equation number 2 substitute this value da by a which to equation 1 therefore equation 1 becomes dr by r d rho by rho plus dl by l minus da by a which is equal to 2 d d divided by d now divide the entire equation by dl by l divide the entire equation by dl by l therefore dr by r divided by dl by l d rho by rho dl by l Okay, here it becomes one, two d by d divided by d l by l. Now, as per the definition of gauge factor, d r by r divided by d l by l, so it can be written as g of gauge factor. Now, d rho by rho, d l by l plus one, so negative of two d by d and d l by l. now we know the definition of poisson's ratio so poisson's ratio it is defined as the negative of for tensile load it is defined as the ratio of negative of lateral strain so lateral strain to the axial strain so lateral strain change in diameter to the original diameter so axial strain change in length divided by original length so for tensile load poisson's ratio it is given by ratio of lateral strain to the axial strain now so for this equation gauge factor and the ratio of d rho by rho divided by dl by l is very very small and it can be neglected therefore so 1 plus 2 this entire quantity is replaced by poisson's ratio so therefore gauge factor is given by this equation so this is the expression for gauge factor thank you